you know, moving outside of the realm of biomedical applications and more broadly speaking, are there applications where UC ceramics will replace metals in the next five to 10 years? And if so, what changes would need to happen either on the ceramic side or on the metal side? And in terms of these ceramics mechanical behavior and manufacturing costs, when would that become viable for those replacements to occur in these various areas? It's happening now with structural components. So I mentioned the three uses in the gas turbine that right. are making gas turbines more efficient because they can operate at higher temperature. And so the component use of a ceramic in the turbine, the, the one component that is being used in the commercial turbines is the six sick silicon carbide, silicon carbide composite material. And the reason it can be used is that it is higher temperature capable and it has a metal like toughness. So it's not brittle like a ceramic that you would think of. You can actually kind of bend it if you had a small piece of this material. And I have done that um, before. So as applications get more extreme or you want to get more energy efficiency, you're going to get to hotter temperatures for like an engine application. Ceramics are a prime candidate to start replacing these metallic components. We can only cool a metal so much. We're already <laughs> operating them above their melting temperatures. But the advances in increasing the melt temperatures for metals, we're getting a few degrees F per decade. But making that jump to ceramics, we're getting a few hundred degrees F by just going to another material system. And wow. so now we know how to make it so that it is more tough and it is metal like. So right now the components that are being replaced, ceramics are non-moving parts. So like the shrouds or the nozzles or the combustion liners. Um, but we are trending towards an all ceramic hot gas path. And wow. that is a, I think, really cool technology and something to keep an eye on. And that's enabled by a composite material. So we hadn't really talked about them before, but it really is a ceramic fiber in a ceramic matrix. And it gives it a toughness that, you know, isn't there for a monolithic ceramic, which has basically just no fibers. It's not a composite. Most of the ceramics we talked about prior our monolithic ceramics, um, ceramic composites have those fibers. And depending on how you lay the fibers and how you basically engineer that microstructure, you can get the strength and the toughness in the regions that you need it for a specific component, like a turbine shroud. That's so as you go to hotter applications and like, think about it, we're building spacecraft and sending people to the International Space Station. And, we, and there are plans to send people to the moon and maybe send the first woman to the moon <laughs> ever. Um, and how are we going to do that? It's going to be ceramics. The applications are certainly getting hotter, higher speed. Uh, you know, folks have heard about hypersonics in the news recently. You know, so moving at these high speeds requires the use of materials that can withstand these high temperatures. And that's all ceramics. You know, they're certainly one of the enabling technologies. So from your vantage point, what do you think the future of ceramics is? And what will these future ceramics applications look like? I think, again, the applications are getting extreme and how they started and helping us, you know, transport people and communicate is exactly the future of ceramics as well. <laughs> I mean, they are very critical in our smartphones, how we're going to get from point A to point B, whether it is on this earth or beyond this earth. And it is also key to our sustainability on this earth. I mentioned earlier that one of the applications is wastewater treatment for filtration. And so the future is the past um, and the present, but they're only going to get more technical and, and uh, we need more people to study and to make them better so that we can all live on this planet together. We're off of it. <laughs> or off of it, right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Nonetheless, ceramics all has a place in enabling that future. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're hot. <laughs> no, they are. are hot. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we've really covered a lot in this conversation. I think we've covered, what, 50,000 years of human history or so? Um, or, or it, a, it a may, good... It's more or less, give or take a couple thousand years, maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we covered a lot and we covered a lot of time and a lot of space. And so I'd like for you to bottom line it for us. And, and, you know, what are three things that our listeners should take away from this discussion on innovations in ceramic technologies? So first, this is a highly technical field. We need all the help uh, that we can get. So I hope that some of you are inspired to look into it as a, as a future for you. Second, you know, ceramics are driving many diverse applications, impacting every aspect of our lives, how we get places, how we live, 
and all the devices that we use that make our lives simpler and easier. And finally, it's really the, the key to our future technologies as well, our defense, how we travel, and how we live. So I hope that some of you are inspired to look into it as a possible career choice.